on everybody? DJ Goham here. Welcome back to the channel. Find some news, baby. It's the news. Today is Friday, which means it's Fact Sheet Friday. It's also Farm Sim News show, show Day. Farm Sim Show Day. Yeah. We've got some updated information on custom modding 7R. PC Builder Farms brings us some progress on all of his mods right now. HR Forrester working on an update to the Clostorian. Lancy Boy's American Falls map is almost done. And we've got some more information on the changelog to Poor Boy Modding's Black Mountain. Check it out. At the time of recording this video, there has not been an update to the testing list. However, I am a little bit early, so it may just not be out yet. Either way, I will leave a link in the description if you'd like to check it out throughout the day, and I'll also do my best to share the list if and when it gets updated. And as I'm recording this video, we do have some mods that have started to release early on the Mod Hub. I will be working on the new mod video after this video comes out, so keep an eye out for it later today. Speaking of today, it is Friday, which means it's Fact Sheet Friday. We got some more fact sheets for Farms in 23. Today we have two fact sheets showing off some new equipment, so let's jump right in. First is the John Deere 4755 tractor. It's going to cost you 110500 bucks. It's got 190 horsepower, 386 liters of fuel. It will travel at 35 kilometers per hour or around 21 miles per hour. It weighs 8.5 tons and it'll take up nine slots. A few things to note, vehicles in Farm Sim 23 appear to have a fixed horsepower rating like previous games or mobile games rather. So the power that you see is the only power you will get no customization. As far as slot counts, they measure the amount of memory or space that the thing takes up. So once your slot count has reached its max, you will not be able to add any more stuff to your map. With that information, let's jump over to fact sheet number two. We have the Kinsey Mock Till 261. This will cost 72,500 bucks. It requires 390 horsepower, weighs 10.6 tons, takes up five slots as an eight meter working width at 18 kilometers per hour or around 11 miles per hour. Farming Simulator 23 will be released on Tuesday, May 23rd for Nintendo Switch, iPhone and iPad and Android devices. There will be over 130 real and authentic machines on the Nintendo Switch version with over 100 on the mobile version. 14 crops, including grapes, olives, and sorghum being added, a variety of field activities, production chains, animals, two new maps with American and European influences, and new auto-loading feature for pallets and logs. You can pre-order FarmSim 23 right now on your preferred platform, and I will be getting FarmSim 23 myself to showcase more information as soon as I'm able, including the differences between the Switch and mobile versions, which I'm real interested in. So stay tuned for all that, and if you have any questions about FarmSim 23, Hey, let me know. Since today's Friday, that must mean that it is Farm Sim Show Podcast Day. Clutch and I are back after a two-week break and ready to rock and roll. You can catch us live at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. UK time on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. We're going to be talking about the biggest news going on right now in the world of Farming Simulator, so... Make sure you don't miss it. Jumping over to Modern News, Custom Modding have some more information about their John Deere 7R series for us, saying that the mod did fail testing the first time around, but they're working to get it fixed and sent back ASAP. Unfortunately, Custom Modding did not say what it failed on. We've also got some information and progress updates from BC Bueller Farms, starting with his foremost smoothwall hopper bin pack. The bank did pass testing, it's ready to go, but it is now waiting on licensing with foremost, so there likely won't be any more updated information on this mod until we get that done. As for the Swather pack, BC says that it's been in testing for over a week now and says that he has no idea why it's taking so long. I do know that there's a lot in this update and it does seem that testing's been, well, a little bit slow over the past two weeks to say the least, so hopefully we see this out soon. And thirdly, his Volvo Semi. The mod is now fully in Giants Editor and he's starting to get it in-game soon. We can also see how the dashboard's gonna light up, which is pretty cool. This is gonna be an epic mod once it's done. HR Forest will be updating one of the most customizable wheel loaders in Farm Sim 22 to make it even better. Their Class Torian 1914, which will be getting an update with minor fixes, minimalist color choices, which is the exact opposite of what they normally do, a removable pendulum block, and they've added a fire brigade design, which you guys can see here. This update is with Giants right now, waiting testing for all platforms. Lancy Boy's got a big update for us today on his American Falls map, saying that all of the models on the map are now completed. This is a project that has taken well over a year, and he's been working on this one more than any other map that he's ever done. Currently, the map's around 95% completed in the beta version, so says it's time to start cleaning everything up in the files and then it will be off for testing for all platforms. 
We also got word that there will be a PC only version later on. However, he won't be getting any more information on that one out, at least for a little while. I will keep you guys updated once we got more info though. And lastly today, we've got an extended changelog for poor boy Bonnings Black Mountain. This is gonna be version 1.5. He'll have three new crops added, peas, lentils, and flax. As far as swathable crops go, we'll have wheat, barley, oats, canola, and flax. These will be swathable with a 20% yield bonus when you use BC Bueller Farms Swather Pack. We also have recycling of waste featured on Quindle. They've added pay dirt, which adds the possibility of gold production, added more to produce at carpentry, added more crop options to animal feed, added paintable bushes, so that's been fixed, adjusted the land prices as they were too low beforehand, and other minor fixes and improvements. Some of this we knew about yesterday, and we actually talked about it yesterday, but now we have what seems to be either the full change log or almost there if anything else is added or changed i will let you know and i'll also let you know that just like every episode of farm sim news links to everything we talked about today can be found in the description and you can check out this entire video in the form of a news article on farmsimnews.com thanks to yo's modding remember there's no release dates for mods so no one knows when any mods going to be released and if it didn't talk about something that you want to know about that just simply means that there's no new information on that topic at the time of recording this video if there's something that you would like to see covered in a future farm sim news vid please let me know down in the comments section below. And make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel for updated information on everything that you need to know about going on in the world of Farming Simulator. Well, guys, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. Get subscribed if you're new. Join the GoHand fam. Make sure your notification bells are on as well. That way, you never miss daily Farming Simulator videos here on the channel. That's it. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend. We will see you later. Peace. And it's been, what, two weeks, three weeks since we've done the podcast? I don't even know if we know how to do it anymore.